Vital well, Sound Doctrine continuing our exploitation of, no, our explanation of uh, <laughs> uh, the polyphonic and, and monophonic, there are various kinds of synthesizers that use storage here we're basically talking about. Let's uh, start out by talking about uh, a little circuit here. I've got a little triangle drawn here. How well you can see it, but uh, it's a there are two types of devices that normally uh, use that. Uh, uh, there are ones called operational amplifier, ones called a comparator. The op amp or operational amplifier is named thusly because it can perform mathematical operations in analog voltages. For instance, you have a two volt signal and you can have an adder which adds a three volt signal to it and the output is five volts, hopefully, approximately. The, pro you know, the problem is, the downside with analog world is it's all subject to uh, the complexity of nature and imperfections happen, but, but you uh, build devices as precisely as you can or sometimes sloppier to have other complex natural anomalies enter into uh, the picture and in musical circuits this can be a very interesting thing. For instance, some old effects pedals, people prefer using old, slow, weird op amps that uh, aren't anywhere near up to today's standards, but they just sound better sonically in particular pedals. So people still use those. Anyway, uh, the operational amplifier and the comparator, the comparator is very simple. It compares two voltages and it has a plus and a minus input which are called uh, on op amps and, inver and comparators inverting and non-inverting. The non-inverting is the plus sign, the minus is the inverting. And the output comes out there and you usually have a, a voltage rail plus and minus here which my instructor failed to tell me that at first and I was like how does this thing work? It doesn't make any... can we get the power to do this thing it's doing? <laughs> But yeah, they get fed a, a voltage uh, supply that has a lot of current capacity. And uh, meanwhile, these are very high impedance inputs, and on an ideal operational amplifier, those have essentially infinite resistance, and there are some that come very close to that using MOSFET technology. And um, so these particular uh, uh, devices that are used in most of the synthesizers you see are either junction FETs, which are on the order of nanoamps of input there, um, 10 to the minus 9th amps, in other words. Uh, MOSFETs can do 10 to the minus 12th, but they're not used very often. They're more sensitive, of course. If you pull them out, you can zap them and destroy them by storing too much charge on one of those and uh, burning out the, uh, the uh, insulative gate that's very thin there. Now, uh, uh, many of them are bipolar, though they use conventional transistor inputs which have uh, more like microamps or uh, so impedances uh, that will draw that much current at normal voltages that you're using 5 to 10 volt whatever input. Now uh, one of the common ways to hook one of these things up since you've got basically a transistor pair in here that you know pits these signals against each other and if if the plus or the uh, non-inverting side is a higher voltage than the inverting side, the output will go high and it will do so. Uh, most of these have a gain of like 10,000 if they're just comparing the voltages here. It will very quickly go to rail even if it's a tiny amount of voltage difference between these two inputs. But uh, that's a good thing for the purposes we're going to use them for. Now. Uh, the negative side here, the inverting side, if it's higher, then the voltage will tend to go low on the output. Now you can do various things with them. You can hook up a um, line from the inverting side to the output, and now we've created a voltage follower because anything this voltage does, this output has to do, or try to do, and it will do so within the current delivery uh, capability. Some op amps deliver to 600 ohm, some 1000 ohm loads without distorting and some more, but um, the basic thing that happens here, if you have, you know, when you initially turn this circuit on, you've got zero volts here, okay? 
and then um, as soon as you turn it on, let's say you already had one volt on a capacitor here, then when you turn that am amplifier on and it begins responding, it's going to go uh, from um, uh, zero volts very quickly up because this value is higher than the zero volts that's setting on this line. And so now we um, will have a signal that shoots right up to one volt and then obviously if it goes further than that this one is higher so it will immediately begin to pull back and so if you look very close you might see some you know see some ring some little <laughs> movement of the signal there but it's um, fairly minimal these things will follow that signal very closely and uh, so in a circuit like this um, that we're going to use it in uh, it functions essentially perfectly and so that is our little lesson on the operational amplifier which will bring us up to speed on talking about the rest of the circuitry that we're going to describe uh, having to do with the architecture of a typical analog synthesizer that has storage.